eyewitnesses in the Canary Islands described seeing a sphere, and inside of it there were two humanoids dressed in red, fidgeting with some energy console. The whole thing hung in the air for a long time, until it disappeared through a ripple in the sky. Let's explore. Hi everyone and welcome to Project Blue Book, where we explore all things unidentified. I am Thor, and thanks for tuning in. On a bright and warm summer night, the 22nd of June 1976, an odd UFO sighting occurred over the Canary Islands vacationing paradise off the coast of Morocco, Africa, a Spanish territory, and it was witnessed by hundreds. Residents of Tenerife, La Palma, and La Gomer all saw it, and some were able to photograph it using cameras with film rolls before the digital age. The press said thousands, but confirmed eyewitness testimony exists on record from hundreds of people. Eyewitnesses included military servicemen on active duty, police officers, and medical professionals, as well as the average tourists and residents of the area. The sightings lasted for 20 minutes before it vanished into thin air. It didn't fly away, it just vanished. And before vanishing, the spherical light was seen performing maneuvers that known aircraft are simply incapable of, nor was it consistent with any known natural phenomena. Simply put, Everything we know about aerodynamics, flight, propulsion, and atmospheric phenomena, including weather, meteors, lightnings, and St. Elmo's fire, all of it was ruled out. Neither was it a weather balloon or military flares. There was no aircraft in the area. This is only the beginning of this bizarre sighting. At 9.27 p.m. earlier in the evening, and before the sighting occurred in Tenerife, a Spanish Navy patrol ship named Atrevida and its entire crew first witnessed an extremely bright yellow-blue light moving between the coast and the ship, actually approaching them directly. They first thought it was an aircraft, but then it stopped and hovered, stationary without a sound, over the still and quiet ocean. Then a light beam shot out from the craft in a rotating motion round after round. The yellow-bluish light seemed to form a halo encircling the sphere, intensely bright to the naked eye. Moreover, the active duty members of the Spanish Navy described the halo light moving in circles as if spiraling rapidly and irregularly around the sphere. This is important to me as it reminds me of several unrelated sightings where eyewitnesses described a light spiraling, like cream being whipped. Their sighting lasted for 40 minutes, and while everyone on board saw the light, the radar on board did not detect a thing. No helicopters were in the area, and no airplanes at all. It was truly an unidentified flying object. The captain of the Atrevida testified to the sighting, and it was never questioned by the Spanish Navy that what he saw wasn't true. Quite the opposite. They confirmed the sighting of the crew and the captain, and that there was no air traffic in the area at the time. Not civil, not military, no airplanes, no helicopters. The Spanish Air Force was in charge of investigating the incident, and they look to have done a thorough job based on the declassified report made available in 1994, including to investigative journalist J.J. Benitez. It was just classified as unidentified, and everyone moved on. Later that night, in addition to the mass sighting over Tenerife and La Palma, individual reports kept coming in to local police stations. A doctor, a cab driver, a school teacher, a security guard, and others came forward describing a huge light orb 
with a rotating beam hovering stationary over the water just off the coast. It was only a few minutes later, about an hour from the first sighting by the crew of Atrevida, that people began seeing the sphere from the shore. The strangest description came from Dr. Francisco Padron Leon from the city of Guia, who was traveling in a taxi on a house visit when he saw it. His story was different because he described seeing two humanoid figures sitting inside the light orb, and he also clearly saw the orb to be a container, a craft with a floor, walls, and ceiling, apparently with transparent walls, because he saw everything inside of it at a distance of over half a mile, hovering just off the ground with a diameter he estimated to be 30 meters, or around 100 feet. He estimated the humanoid figures to be around 8 to 10 feet tall, or even taller, wearing red suits and dark elongated helmets that made their heads look, well, not human. They seemed to be fidgeting with a center console that looked like an energy source more than an instrumentation, although it was too far away to identify or understand. The taxi driver confirmed this sighting in the exact same detail. They kept staring while driving when they saw a blue smoke coming from a tube at the center of the object and shortly thereafter, the sphere expanded rapidly from looking like a minivan in size to looking like a 10-story building, they said. They didn't stop until they reached Dr. Francisco's destination, and he ran to the door to call the people out to share their sighting. And by the time they came outside, the sphere shot up in the sky towards Tenerife, and became smaller until it disappeared into the distance of the dark summer night sky. All that was left in the sky, at the exact spot where the craft had been seen, was a slight halo like a circle of fog, as if remnants of the disappearance of the sphere. What is remarkable about this sighting are the illustrations and hand drawings made by multiple unrelated eyewitnesses, some elaborate and well-drawn, others primitive and basic, yet each and every one of them is obviously describing in great detail the exact same thing. This is what a multiple eyewitness, independent and corroborative testimony looks like. It's a model of believability. And that's not all, because a tourist managed to snap a color photograph. There were reports of more than one sphere with two humanoids in red uniform traveling in and out of the main sphere as if they were not the same craft, but mothership and pods merging and separating at random. But this mothership pod relationship is well established from multiple eyewitness accounts and multiple events the world over and has been caught on video, including over Paris, France in 1999. The Canary Island Sphere sighting case was declassified by the Spanish military in 1994, and a statement of the commanding officer of the Spanish Air Force, who wrote the report, Enrique Delgado, stated, and I quote, The fact that a very strange and peculiar aerial phenomena occurred on the night of June 22, 1976, is a true and proven fact, as incredible as its behavior and conditions may seem, end quote. And since the declassification, several sightings have been compared to this main event. In 1976, several UFO sightings were recorded in the general vicinity of the June 22nd sighting, including in the early 2000s, when several sightings were reported over and around the Canary Islands. On November 14, 1979, when a Spanish pilot named Captain Javier Lerdo Tejada, a nine-year veteran as a commercial pilot with six years as a pilot of the Spanish Air Force before that. He had to do an emergency landing, flying a caravel jet from Salzburg, Germany to the Canary Islands after a near-miss collision with two UFOs flying in formation. It was a near-miss incident he reported upon landing. They had sideswept him, said Captain Javier as if interested in his reaction, stating, quote, 
I saw two very strong red lights. I first saw them at 23,000 feet. They appeared to be 15 miles away. At 28,000 feet, they were only a half a mile away. And at 29,000 feet, they were right on top of me on a collision course. End quote. In 2004, an Italian national employed in the area claimed to have witnessed a luminous orange sphere in the sky at around 6 p.m. in the evening. And two years later, in the summer of 2006, several eyewitnesses reported a sighting of several static white lights over Tenerife. A local TV station reported on the incident, including showing footage. In 2008, in Puerto del Carmen region, a British tourist husband and wife saw two yellow-orange lights hovering several hundred feet away. A former Royal Air Force personnel, he testifies this was nothing he had ever seen before. They saw the lights dancing irregularly and approached them to close proximity, as if intentionally taunting them with their irregular movement while coming closer before disappearing out over the ocean and away. Many tourists have reported seeing strange lights off the coast of the Canary Islands since, including an American couple who grabbed binoculars to observe the bright oblong object they saw, only to see its color twisting, swirling, and folding onto itself, exactly as described in the 1976 incident. And here is where the story gets even more interesting. According to this eyewitness, a second object arrived from nowhere. It just appeared, said the eyewitness. As he stared at the sky, he saw a triangular window like a tear having opened up in the sky and he described atmospheric ripples around the tear like ripples on water, he described them. And then... The two bride crafts, who now looked identical, entered the tear and disappeared into it, vanished. He and his wife kept staring at the sky in that spot for hours thereafter, but they could see nothing but the dark night sky. Lastly, in 2015, a tourist couple described a sphere with an oblong metallic body hovering around it, and then disappearing into it before both disappeared into a tear in the sky that then closed and vanished as if this portal apparently had never existed. You can watch and listen to this and other podcasts on Project Blue Book where we explore all things unidentified. Each day, let's practice compassion and kindness. And please subscribe. I am Thor, and thanks for tuning in. See you next time.